Well guys, today in the post arrived a Zimo MX644D sound decoder and a Zimo optimized 3D speaker. So today's little job is to fit sound to the Daypole Class 08. Okay, so here's a different angle that uh, I've not used before, but here we go. First thing I'm going to do is work out the position of the speaker working around the tripod so if the camera gets knocked from time to time I do apologise. And I've got sufficient spare wire there which is going onto these two pads here. Uh, there's no particular orientation but I can trim off about that much wire to make some room. Just bear with me while I get my snips out draw. See, there we go, knocking the camera. And now the advantage is these bits of wire, we can use these on the capacitor for the stay alive. And the easiest way to strip these wires, because they are small, thin wire just pinch with the fingernails. I haven't got big fingernails. Might need sharper. There we go. There's one. Shouldn't have chewed in this morning at work when I was bored. And there's the other. So I'm going to get a sticky pad from somewhere to stick on the bottom. I'm actually also with my blunt knife so there's gushings of blood. I apologise, I'm just going to trim off the front edge there because it's a bit proud on the front where it was on the print table when they fabricated this box. Oh, I can feel like it's going to slip and then I'm going to have blood. No, jolly good. Good job because I don't know what side of blood, especially my own. So I shall now go and get a sticky pad so that I can mount it inside the front of the loco. So the little pads I have are what I used for sticking hooks onto walls and doors and things. With the, they come with a little pull out thing for removing it so you don't damage the paintwork. Well I'm not going to need all of that for this little speaker. So I'm just going to Trim it down a touch with my good old blunt knife. Got boxes of blades, I should really swap it over. It's bent. Yep, phone always goes off at the wrong time. But anyway, as I was saying, with my very blunt knife, I've managed to uh, tear that in half. So I'm just going to stick for now one piece on the bottom of the speaker housing so I might as well get it in the middle and square there we go so that should hopefully after I sold these wires on enable us to fit it in the loco so first off soldering rules always tin your wires so basically, where I've stripped back, I'm just going to twist the ends together nicely. So that they're neat and tidy. And straight. And with my soldering iron, just see if it's nice, yet yeah, nice and hot. It's a standard electric soldering iron, make sure the tip is clean. Get me solder, little spot on the end of the iron and touch it and it, it should just flash, flash down the wire because of the foot, so that's it. That's all that is needed, just a tiniest amount of solder on the ends of the wire. And what we'll now do is bring the logo back in. You just put a tiny spot, try not to burn myself or melt the loco 
on the speaker pad. Just there's one little bubble. Tiny one. And another tiny little bit. You don't need to go mad and put great big mountains of solder. And what you do now is literally just Touch one to the other. Oh, I can't see. Let's just get that at an angle where I can see around everything. And attach. Touch. Just touch them together and the heat off. That wire is on. And with the second wire. And just touch. And that is the speaker attached. And peel off the sticky bit off the base. Tuck it in there. Stand it up. And with my tiny little screw, my little screwdriver here, I can just make sure it's pressed down and firm. So there we go. So that is now the speaker attached and in place. So the next little job is to do the uh, wiring on the capacitor. Same thing. I'm just, I'm just going to shorten this wiring because um, the legs on the capacitors, so I don't need quite such long legs. So I'm just going to snip them off about that long. Just so they're shorter. Get rid of the bits of wire. And I'm just going to get my little helping hands out so you just bear with me for a second. Right. This is useful for two reasons. One, it's going to act as a heat sink. And two, it'll hold it in place so I don't burn my fingers. So again, we're going to tin. Oh, come here, solder guy. We're going to just tin. Simple as that. And just turn this one around for a second. Hmm. Tripods. Let's clean the end in a damp sponge. I'll bring it around this end. I'll just grab that. And we'll do the end of this leg. flash and that's it yeah I think that works better if I put them the, the uh, solder iron around behind the tripod so with my spare bits of wire that I just cut off the speaker these should be large enough for the stay alive capacitor Trim that end. And that end, and again, just twist it so it's straight. And what I'm going to do here is again, just use my little extra bit of hands there. 
wipe off the tip of the soldering iron and the tiniest flesh and the end is done and then all you have to do try and balance your hands together apply the heat let go and that's it attached easy as that Flash of solder. So this that is soldered, the leg is soldered, and you just touch together and oh, that's like that. And just a quick Easy as that. What I also now got to get out of the drawer, which is under the legs of the tripod, is just a tiny bit of heat shrink to go over the end. Okay, so we've got two little bits of heat shrink tube. We'll just run them down the legs. I hope they'll shrink enough, but it's the smallest size I've got. But these little wires for the capacitor aren't very big. So we just run them down there. Get the soldering iron and just gently stroke it so it heats the rubber and shrinks it down hopefully. And it's leg. off the solder that I've just got on there and that shrunk on simple as that okay so what we have on the chip so there's the top there's the underside and you've got the two little gold pads so you have one pad there and a one pad there and on the capacitor it shows me that the minus goes to this end and the positive goes to that end so that's minus to there plus to there um, the minus on the capacitor has got a great big minus drawn on it so this leg to there and then that one up there so that's easy enough I'm just no, I don't know how I'm going to hold this. <laughs> I'll probably sold it flat on the floor, to be honest. So what I'm going to do first off, again, is tin, tin the pad. So it's a little tight. Having cleaned that on the split sponge, just a little touch, tiny little... That's it. And on this pad. That's it. So the object of the exercise is not to get great big enormous blobs, but just a touch to make sure it's melted on the pad. Because the, the uh, yep. good and it's on there just a tiny little spot and again I'm going to strip off the bare minimum this time I'm going to have to do it in my cutters um, when you use cutters for stripping wire don't go with the wedge out because you'll just cut in and rip it so you just go gently with the square end just very gently and 
should just pop off. I'll do the other end the same length, because there are two different ones. Just snip. These need replacing as well. Even you're getting blunt. Cutting stuff that's too big really it doesn't help. So just a tiny, shortest little bit. And now that uh, just do it down here. Clean the end. Tiny touch. If I can stop it wiggling around. As quick as that flash. Job done. So we'll get this end here. The negative on this pad. Sorry, camera. And the positive, if I can get it to sit still on this pad, just hold it on and touch. Job. Done. So now you have the stay alive capacitor attached to the um, chip. This chip will now go on the loco this way around. Get the chip dangling at that end the block on top and obviously the blank one here without the leg there. So this comes off easy, this just goes I say easy, it's still a bit tight. this. <coughs> there we go. I've done that on a class 37 once and the end went up and it bent all the pins only and then got to try and straighten them all up without snapping them off. Um, there's components underneath the board and components under there so I'm just going to get a bit of tape and stick it on the chip to make sure there's no chance of bits and pieces short circuiting so I'll just grab a bit of tape and I'll be back again so a little bit of tape and I'm just going to lay that like the unstuck from your finger Just lay that along there, just to make sure that when it's laying on top, that it doesn't touch anything. I think that should be fine. Up. Yep. So now to fit the chip, it'll only go on one way the base plate up. That's it. Simple as that. And I'm going to get just a little bit of blue tack which is rolling around on my bench here somewhere because I had it 20 minutes ago. As usual with every workbench stuff goes missing and uh, there it is. I'm just going to stick a little bit of blue tack on the capacitor just to hold it and just lay it on there job's done we now have a sound fitted class 08 now this sound is Paul Chetter sound um, and as you've seen you've watched me install it so uh, I've not checked anything this is all as it's come out of the box, how you should expect to do it. 
So speakers in, wired up to the terminals on there. Capacitor is soldered onto the chip. Chip is plugged in. Oh, look at that typical. I did catch the 08. Watch the soldering iron. It will cook your loco. <laughs> Good job on repainting this. I'll just shave off the uh, the cooked bit. And, but this should cover that, which it does. All good, all done. And uh, I'll get the controller rigged up, and we'll put it on the bit of track at the back of the bench. And uh, we'll see what uh, it does. Yeah, we'll just wait for the command station to uh, fire up. And default for the loco is 3, so we'll select loco 3 once it all turns on. There we go. Just adjust it down a little bit. So to select loco, press select. I don't have a loco 3 programmed in because it's always the default, so it's best not to allocate a loco to number 3. So we'll select 3, new loco. Um, so hopefully by pressing F1, so you the logo again, it should start. Well, that sounds pretty good. So, if I get my piece of paper out, which I've ducked in the drawer here. The instructions that it came with gives me, so, O is light, but I've disconnected the top light, so who knows what will turn the other ones on. F2 is uh, brakes. F3 is a single whistle. F4 is a double whistle. Uh, we have a couple of other things. We've got a light engine mode is F5, so we'll press that. And we'll see if it moves. F2 to break and stop. I've got to remember that one. Uh, my Sutton locomotives works. Yeah, Sutton locomotive works. Class 24 was the same, and every time I got it out, I crashed it into buffers because I wind the speed down, but it never slowed down. And by the time I remembered, it got into the buffers or some stock or whatever. So F8 is buffer and couple. F9 is variable flange squill. stop it. Uh, F10 is shunting light so if I turn F10 on if you'll see there you can just about see at this angle I'll take it around the end in a bit and you'll be able to see on the end but F10 shunting lights yeah, I have a full set of red and white lights at each end. F11 is exhauster. So we can run vacuum brake trains. Turn the lights off for a second. Uh, we've got Spirax valves, auto drain valves on F12.
and if I go now I have to edit this loco uh, so edit loco edit loco um, I now have to allow all the other functions it's been a little while since I've been in here which allows you up F9 to see all the extra function buttons are here So, first thing I've got to do on the edit of the loco screen, because if I go back to where we were, you'll see I've only got up to F12 enabled on the controller for this chip. So, we're going to the loco, edit loco, into properties, and then you have all the functions with the, with the green tick on. So, we'll go up. Uh, up to function 11 on that one right so function 12 there is no 13 14 or 15 according to the piece of paper 13 14 and 15 are wagons taking up slack fuel transfer pump and wipers so we'll enable those they should be on permanent not momentary and we'll do a test so 13 is the taking up slack. A bit of a heavy shunt. Um, F14 is a fuel transfer pump. You just hear that there. Not too noisy. He's in the cab after all. And F15 is the wipers drain in. fine so we're going to the next page F16 is compressor so we'll enable compressors F17 is guards whistle F18 is doors opening and closing and these should be momentary so sorry 17 is momentary, 18 is momentary, 19 is the cab door, uh, cab light, yep light goes on and off so that's correct, and then we get some sounds, so 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and up to 26 is phrases, momentary, it says on the piece of paper. So we'll test these ones. Well, you got a bit of a rain there. If you bear in mind that's put inside the loco, so that is a very loud shouting radio and driver on there. So it's rather professional shunting. Uh, it was never like that when I was at work, but uh, there we go. I didn't break any wagons, not with shunting anyway. So there we go. Uh, 26 and tw uh, sorry, 27 and uh, momentary is volume up and down. Enable function. Momentary. Tick the little tick button. So all the other functions have now come up on here. So if I take you around the end there, I'll put the lights on and you can check that the lights work for me. Okay, I'll take this segment again because again, I forgot to press record. 
no drama in this time, it doesn't matter. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is check the stay alive. So if I lift this off the track, it should still run for a little while. Be stay alive, it's not working. So now I'm paranoid that I've wired the legs back to front. Da -da -da. See, fault finding as you go. No, nope, that's definitely wired up the correct way round. It might be needs a bit longer to charge up. We'll see how it goes. We'll try it at the end of this video. Otherwise, I'm going to have to investigate. Anyway, so we can now turn the lights on, they're on, now they're off, so I know the shunting lights work, we know the sound works, we'll just have a little play. button which is the brake is not a momentary uh, toggle so you press it once it turns it on press it again it turns it off rather than just while you hold the button down so I can now wind up the loco and it doesn't actually move because the brakes are still on and I have done that at work why won't it move why won't it move so take the brakes off and it should jump away. One two for forward. Pushed the uh, spare class one for a baby off the other end. Stay alive. So I'll have to investigate that further. We'll sort that out.
go. Um, some of you may be wondering why I'm not doing this on the rolling road. Um, the process rolling road that I reviewed in my last video has eaten the wheels of the class 33 so I shan't be recommending it and I have had to send it back to Hatton's for a replacement. Um, I checked the gauge on it and it was a bit tight, it was 315 mil between the gauge on the rollers um, so I don't know if that was the issue to start with but uh, I won't be recommending that for anybody. Um, I have however bought some items off eBay and uh, I shall see what they do uh, when I get them here but hopefully they won't chew up the wheels. So yeah if you're happy and enjoyed this video please like, subscribe and uh, share away and um, any questions please ask. Catch you next time.